Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, October 10th, 2012. I'm Darko. I'm going to cover some different news today, instead of the Mideast, get into some uh, eugenics and uh, environmental news, uh, Big Brother news, and more on terror, liberty, sovereignty news. Although, the first article I have for you is U.S. Army frustrated with mainstream ideologies. You might be a terrorist, they say, from Wired Magazine. These are some of the warning signs that you could have turned into a terrorist who will soon kill your co-workers, according to the U.S. military. You've recently changed your choices in entertainment. You have strange discussions. You complain about bias. You're socially withdrawn. And you're frustrated with mainstream ideologies. Your risk factors for radicalization include social networks and youth. And the government has more or less classified journalists as terrorists. I covered this article uh, briefly last time, or not last time, but about two weeks ago. The following actions may get an American citizen on U.S. soil lab labeled as a suspected terrorist today. Being young, if you live near a battle zone, you are fair game for drone strikes, reporting or doing journalism, speaking out against government policies, protesting anything. That's right, they're tracking and tracing everything that you do now when you protest, tapping into your cell phones and whatnot. If you're questioning war or against it, you could be a terrorist, criticizing government's targeting of innocent civilians with drones, even though uh, killing innocent civilians with drones is the main thing which increases terrorism, asking questions about pollution, i.e. fracking, you're treated as an insurgent, paying with cash at an internet cafe, and if you pay with high denominations at a toll booth, uh, you could be detained, asking questions about the Wall Street heist, uh, robbing generations, uh, holding gold, creating alternative currencies, or bartering. They don't want that. That's why it's illegal. They just want their uh, monopolized currency. Stocking up on food, having bumper stickers that say, know your rights or lose them, investigating factory farming, the atrocities that happened there, infringing uh, copyrights, taking pictures or videos like of clouds, like in Texas, you get a visit by the FBI, uh, talking to police officers, i.e. if you know your rights and you assert them in front of the pigs, they may not like that, and you, they look at you like you're a terrorist, like you're an alien. Wearing a hoodie could uh, put you on a terrorist list. Uh, writing on a piece of paper, not having a Facebook account, that's right. If you don't, if you have a Facebook account, like the last article we just said, social networks, uh, it could be used for terrorists. It's a haven for terrorist activity. But if you don't use it, you could be avoiding it. You could be suspicious to be a terrorist. Holding the following beliefs may also be considered for uh, grounds for suspected terrorism, being frustrated with mainstream ideologies, like we just said, using the social media, valuing your privacy. You're a privacy advocate, right? Supporting Ron Paul or libertarians, uh, being a Christian, being anti-tax, anti-regulation for the gold standard, uh, being reverent of individual liberty, being anti-nuclear, believing in conspiracy theories, you might be a terrorist, says here that a belief that one's personal or national way of life is under attack, of course, this is coming straight from the international um, think tanks and that, that design policy for the future 20, 50 years out. They know that people in America are going to feel like their way of life is under attack, which it is. So they uh, want to make sure they target those individuals. Impose strict religious tenets or laws on society. Fundamentalists insert re religion into the political sphere. Uh, those who seek to politicize religion or it could be a terrorist. Being anti-abortion, you could be a terrorist. Uh, being anti-globalization, you could be a terrorist. Suspicious of centralized federal authority, fiercely nationalistic as opposed to universal and globalist, you might be a terrorist if you're a nationalist and are uh, basically, uh, what is it, uh, proud of your country. A belief in the need to be prepared for an attack either by participating in survivalism, stocking up on food, opposed to genetically modified food, you might be a terrorist, and opposing surveillance state. Too easy is what an ex-drone operator on watching civilians die says. He was speaking to a BBC correspondent in which he describes he almost ordered a drone attack on suspected militant thought to be planning an improvised explosive device. At the last minute when the strike was canceled, when they realized the potential enemy he could see on the monitor was in fact a child playing. He also talked about witnessing via video link from a fighter jet and missile strike on Taliban targets and built up areas that left several civilians dead. Mr. Jeffrey warns that while drones are a precise and effective weapons, I doubt that they have also made it too easy to kill. So, you know, you've seen that article that came out recently. Uh, it was actually based off research and a report that said what? One out of every 45 people that are killed by drone strikes are actually terrorists, right? So 
if you are a terrorist, you better be careful um, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to take 45 innocent civilians to be killed before they come and get you. But when they do find you, they're going to get you. So if uh, you might want to warn your neighbors to watch out because they don't give a damn about, uh, you know, collateral damage. Next article I have for you is court upholds U.S. government immunity in terror eavesdropping. U.S. court on Tuesday left a place left in place a law that allows the Justice Department. I love how they call it the Justice Department because it's the exact opposite injustice to stop suits against telecom companies for participating in wiretaps of potential terrorists. So we're all potential terrorists. Just to throw that out there after going through all those lists of descriptions of possible terrorists, we are all potential terrorists. So, of course, the ruling was a key setback for civil libertarians and all the other people who think that they can actually gain freedom through statism, through legislation, through government um, actions and that, challenging the broader powers of the government since 9-11 attacks in the U.S. to use electronic surveillance to track potential threats in the name of national security and protecting the homeland. Texas schools punish students who refuse to be tracked with microchips. A school district in Texas came under fire earlier this year when it announced that it would require students to wear microchip embedded ID cards at all times. Now students who refuse to be monitored say they are feeling the repercussions. On October 1st, students at the John Jay High School in Texas and San Antonio have been asked to attend class with photo ID cards equipped with these RFID chips to track every student's location. The educators insist that the endeavor is being rolled out in Texas to stem rapid truancy. Yeah, it's so bad they have actually have a Texas truancy task force. And in other places, uh, the cops will actually come to the doorstep of the students to escort them so they can get their daily dose of brainwashing. That's why I advise the parents, if you have children, to remove them from those brainwashing, re-education, indoctrination camps and um, Try to do what you can just to keep them the hell away from those places. Uh, devastating the school's funding. So, of course, this, the, 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 the uh, teachers are going to be on board with this. They have to be. Whatever the school and the, and the eugenicists, social engineers uh, incorporate in their policy making, they have to go with. Because my, my mom's just, she's about to retire and she can't wait to get out of there. And she told me she can't even write her own curriculum and she does it a little bit. She tries to fight the system, whatever, but she, you can't, right? You can't say no to this. You have to be on board. So they don't write the curriculum at all. Anymore. So students who refuse to walk the halls with a card in their pocket or around their neck claim they are being uh, tormented by instructors and barred from participating in certain school functions. Some also said they were turned away from common areas like cafeterias and libraries. So they said that educators have ignored pleas to respect her privacy and told her she cannot participate in school elections if she refuses to comply with the tracking program. So... And uh, this conditions future generations to get used to it. But they could just use the grounds that it's not safe. It's emitting radio frequencies in your body. I mean, you should be against that. You should have the ability to, uh, uh, to not be forced to do that. But if you do, then it means that you're voluntarily allowing yourself or your child to be victimized, right? Because you do have the power to remove them from that school. And you do have the right to protect you or your child's body, right, from physical harm, which is that that's what it's doing. Some parents decry New Carroll School Palm Scanner. They say the system to pay for lunches is a violation of privacy. Instead of paying for their lunches with crumbled dollar bills and loose change, sounds like it's bad, right? Students in Carroll County Schools are having their palms scanned in a new checkout system, raising concerns, raising concerns from some. See, it's always a minority. It's some, right? Parents, that their child's privacy is being violated. And, uh, you know, there's there's probably half of them, if not most of the parents, don't even know. They're not even aware of this, right? Because you got to do an opt-out program. Like, you, like basically, uh, silence is consent. And this is the way these bastards roll. Uh, silence is consent. So they won't tell you until it catches the news like this. And then the parents are all up in arms and rah, 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 our children, our schools. Well, they're not your children um, if you give them away to the state. And um, they're not your schools. They're owned by the state, which is owned by um, eugenicists and social engineers. That, and you pay for this system. So, you know, just have some kind of concern about it before. And don't just be all up in arms uh, when it finally hits the mainstream news. But the fact is, is that they're not interested. They're not really involved in their child's life. So they don't really know, right? They've had maybe 20 minutes of conversation. And even with that, the child's face is glued to a cell phone or a TV screen or video game. So they're not actually paying attention anyways. So 
uh, yeah, I mean, just don't be naive about it when it comes down to this. This is because of years and generations of children being away from their families and away from their parents and the schools and the government's taking over. So next up, could cafeteria trash cams stop veggie waste? This is all recently, October 3rd, 2012. School officials in Lake County, Florida, uh, consider installing cameras on trash cans to see what kids toss at lunch. Students wasted $75,000 in, $75, in GMO, pesticide, uh, uh, herbicide, fertilizer, lace, sterilizing um, crap last year. That's right. Yeah, so they justify it by saying it's a waste of nutrition, but also a waste of your taxpayer money. So, see, they care about your taxpayer money now. So a school's mom, of course, again, all up in arms when it finally hits the mainstream media, says that uh, a kid uh, shouldn't be getting kids to eat better. It's the parent's responsibility. So, again, well, you're not there. You just transferred ownership uh, of them to the to the state. So you don't live in a democracy, so you don't have a say. So quit trying to act like you do, right? <laughs> so it says here, they won't capture the students' faces. So that's good and comforting, right? Cameras in school uh, bathrooms watch students in Britain. This will come to the United States soon for September. Um, says here that in England, teens who go to the bathroom are never really alone. Video cameras are in the, inside all 12 loos or bathrooms. So... Nice, isn't it? Yeah, 200 high schools across Britain have installed surveillance cameras in the bathrooms and locker rooms. And the director said this report will come to a shock to many parents, right? Nestle is putting GPS devices inside candy bars to track winning customers. Yeah, that's right. It says the candy uh, company launched the We Will Find You campaign. Look at that. Nice little SWAT team police stake, right? In the UK, where GPS tracking devices were placed inside six candy bars, once the winning wrapper is open, the device will go off, and Nestle officials will be able to find the exact location of the customer. That's awesome. So, yeah, and actually they'll have a helicopter and repel the little uh, SWAT team strike force, and they'll haul you off, kind of like simulating going to jail, right? And this is my website, ggnonline.com, Global Government News, uh, and YouTube is DDarko2012 and DDarko2013. I have a poll up here. Will you vote this November? I have a whopping two votes. That's including myself saying, no, they will not vote this November. So go in there and check it out. Followed by email. And I'm going to continue here. It says, mom jailed 180 days for kids' truancy. She broke California's law and unexcused school absences. So she's going to get 180 days for, it says here, it's a state truancy law. She said, it says that it's the second parent jailed in the last two years on the charge in Kings County. And like a lot of um, government policies, they say it's a process that takes months to get to this point. So she had it coming, right? She deserves this. She's a bad child, right? Because we are che treated like children by the state. So it's no wonder why they treat parents uh, like children as well. On average, we're making 50 to 20 calls and dealing with these issues. So see, because they use, the, they use uh, force and violence and coercion. That's how they do things, right? like everything else. So you think after the um, 100th phone call, they would just give up saying, well, you know what, maybe this mother does not want her children to come to the school anymore. Okay, that's her voluntary consent. Okay, so be it. No, they have to use force. They have to put them in CPS. They have to put her in jail. They have to vaccinate them all against uh, their own consent because they know what's best for them. And it's because we live in a democratic free society. And being sarcastic, of course. I saw this article uh, from last week. A phone home. New York teens pay valets to store their devices. That is insane. Students from New York's Washington Irving Educational Complex line up to leave their cell phones and other devices for a dollar a day. Yeah, thousands of teenagers who can't take their cell phones to, uh, to school have another option. It's a new enterprise paying a dollar a day to leave in a truck that's parked nearby. So got to have them, right, all the time. You know, I actually saw an article that said that the future of smartphones will actually be in your brain, embedded in your brain. I'm sure they'll be lining up for that crap too. Attention disorder or not, pills to help in school. So when the good doctor hears about uh, the poor patients, eugenics patients, uh, struggling in their re-education brainwashing camps, he usually gives them a taste of some powerful medicine, Adderall. And they give them all these pills and stuff like that. But the good doctor says that uh, the disorder is made up an excuse to prescribe pills to treat what he considers the children's true ills, which is they're rejecting the programming. 
poor, poor academic performance in inadequate schools, not enough funding for the brainwashing, and they're rejecting the brainwashing. Hmm. Oh God, get this. We decided that as a society that it's too expensive to modify the kids' environment, so we have to modify the kid. Hmm. Thank you.